All right, here we are in the second part, the much anticipated second part. Who's he going to name, you know, and everything? Uh, well, you'll see um, if you watch the whole thing. Um, definitely some very, very false prophets I'm going to be kicking in this thing and showing you some pretty hardcore stuff. Um, this guy here, his name is Jonathan Kleck. We're going to start out with this guy. Uh, I was made aware of him by a brother first and then a sister, and they're both kind of going, yeah, he's got some weird stuff. And the sister uh, that told me about this, she said, you know, that uh, she has a past in the new age type of stuff. And she's like, this guy, you gotta, you got to see this Jonathan Kleck guy's uh, testimony. So I watched it and it was just like instantly I could just feel like the, like, okay, this guy's majorly possessed with devils. I mean, the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a blanket while he's in a hotel room with some woman that he's not married to. And, you know, he's lost. But the Holy Spirit comes upon him and is guiding him and showing him all this stuff and everything else and and uh, enter into the fire and all this. And, I mean, the guy is a first-rate wingnut, okay? But uh, we're going to watch a little bit of this thing. I'm going to put up for you to watch here. Um, he is running from people that are trying to kill him and the Holy Spirit's leading him and all this other stuff. And he goes out of the motel through an emergency exit and the alarms don't sound. And... Um, he goes out and he goes down the steps and he goes down to the street and you're going to see where, what happens next. Okay? So let's watch this. Okay, guys, so, so check this out. So this is it. So I've come out the door up there and I, I mean, well, hang on, Chris, stay on me for a second. I, I've come out the door up there and I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, like it was everything that changed in, in, in some way I can't explain to you. So anyway, I come out the door. Now I'm going to have Chris go to the stairs up there. And I start walking down those stairs. And you see the 45 degree angle stairs right there? I walk down those stairs. And the spirit is just telling me, you did it. Go. Keep going. Keep going. And then I start walking on, on this, this horizontal set of stairs right there. Now check it out. Chris, now get on me for a sec. As I walk down those stairs, they're spring loaded. So they come down, they go boom, and they hit the ground. So as I come down those stairs, they make a really loud bang, and they hit the ground while I'm sitting there, right? I get down off these stairs, and now watch this, I'm gonna act it out. Here's this, right here, one walks straight up to me and stands in front of me, okay? His name's Michael, he's an archangel, and he goes, pray with me, my brother. Here, Chris, do me a favor, back up just a bit and just back up a bit. And I'm sitting here, he wa he's waiting right here. He's waiting for this to hit the ground. As soon as it hits the ground, I'm standing there, he walks up and goes, pray with me, my brother. And I'm standing there and then he comes alongside of me and we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then in that moment, guys, water and light came down. And I'm going to look up at this wall. Water and light came down on me right here in this alley. And I was instantaneously, instantaneously transformed. And I was just, it was unbelievable. And then Michael looks at me and he goes, now, say a Hail Mary. And I looked at him and I was confused. I, I mean, I was filled with power, guys. I mean, I was born again. I was a totally different creature. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, all the nuts aren't in the nut house. You know what I mean? I mean, this guy is a... He's insane. Um, you know, and, and really, I think what a lot of these people are, these false prophets are atheists and they're coming out and they, they understand that they can make merchandise of, you know, Christians, professing Christians anyhow. And they come out and they just lie. He's having a good time, I'm sure, with us just making this whole thing up. Um, it's disgusting. And of course, you know, it, it could also be a, you know, in a witchcraft or something like that. Again, trying to deceive people. So... You know, just to, and you say, well, how do you know it didn't happen? Okay, where does anybody 
pray the Our Father prayer and get saved, get born again from praying that prayer. And when you got saved, did you have water and light pour down on you from above? I mean, we had that one Mennonite guy in my one Amish exposed thing, and he talked about getting tingle showers after he joined the Catholic Church. You know, I don't even want to know what that's all about, but, the, you know, maybe they got a little similar experience here or something. I mean, <laughs> and Michael's just going to walk up. Anybody that's ever going to get saved, Michael just shows up there and, and leads you in a prayer of our Father, you know, and stuff, and then tells you to say a, a Hail Mary. And he goes on to say, Michael says, yeah, well, it doesn't do anything. You know, that's the, another thing or whatever else. Because he prays the Hail Mary, and he's like, it didn't really do anything. And Michael's like, yeah, don't worry about it, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. We're not going to watch any more of it because it's just more stupid nonsense. But uh, we're going to watch another one of this Wingnuts uh, videos. It's, he says, it's called, uh, I Wilt Draggeth Thee Across the Finish Line. You know, again, a lot of these uh, word prophet types, they'll say, I have a new word from the Lord. You know, God gave me a new word. And they'll, and they'll like act like they're quoting scripture. Again, all they're doing is mocking the Bible. Is all they're doing. And you look at their uh, new revelation scripture that God gave them. It contradicts what God actually did give us. King James Bible. But just watch a little bit of this stuff. It's just, it's so absurd. It's so ridiculous. Let's watch. Okay, here we go, folks. Um, let's see, I'll just cut to the chase. I got a little bit of a bomb to drop on you guys. Um, it's not a bad bomb, so everybody chill. Uh, let's see, I was called in 2002. I was called in an alley. I was called in the presence of an angel. Uh, I got saved. Um, when I got saved, I got filled with... Uh, the Holy Spirit, but I also was filled with some supernatural gifts. Since 2002, these gifts have been working out of me, and the Lord, when He called me, um, showed me that He was going to use me to solve the riddle of ages. Uh, you know, I mean, God has called me into ministry, and I have been filled with the Holy Ghost and other supernatural powers as I sit here in my affliction t-shirt. You know, UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship, I think is what the affliction thing is about. Lightning bolt and stuff underneath. Just and you know, you know, this is of the Lord somehow. Sports competitions and some two guys beating each other to death and blood all over the place. Women beating each other now too in this UFC stuff. And the Holy Spirit just mightily upon this guy. You know, he's just been filled, you know, water and light poured on him, you know, from out in the alley and stuff like this. You know, I mean, who believes this garbage? You know, I, I remember one of the, the uh, post-trib thieves I did back, way back in 2009, did a study on post-trib rapture thieves, and there was a, some guy named Doug or something, the End Times Watchman or something like this. I think it was him or I might have that mixed up, but Doug was his name. And he talked about how God revealed to him the spirals in the Bible. And then the red dragon was telling him stuff like that. I mean, you know, some of the stuff you just, you hear these people saying stuff and you go, huh? You know, where's, what? I never even heard of this before. They're false. They're fake. Let's watch a little bit more of this. But, you know, this is just more for fun than anything else. And I'm going to say a couple more things about this guy, but let's get back to what he's saying. And it had to do with the pyramid and the sphinx, and I wasn't sure what he meant. Well, if you watch this YouTube channel and you go back over all these videos that the Lord's allowed me to do, and if you just look at my personal testimony, you look at the fact that I have a sunglass company called Vampires. <sighs> God's leading me. I'm supernaturally powerful. If you saw your my testimony, yeah, we saw it all right. You know, whatever that was. And God's led me to, you know, I, I have a, a, a sunglass company called Vampires. You know, eating flesh, drinking blood, condemned before the law, under the law, after the law. I've talked about that in other studies. You're not supposed to eat blood, you know. And yet this 
Luciferian Satanist says God, he's God's prophet. And yet he names his sunglass company after something that God spells out as an abomination. Vampires. It's insane. I don't even know how much more of this I want to watch, but, uh, you know, I'll watch a little bit more. Uh, there's a logo right there. It's a V with fangs. It says vampires. And the slogan for the company, I will just stay there, Clay. I'm going to let Clay zero in on this. Like, uh, guys, I don't, I don't stand on formalities, but... This is my sunglass company letterhead. You see it says, come out of the darkness and into the light. First Peter 2 says, you're God's chosen possession, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. To declare the praises of the Lord who called you out of the darkness and into the light. It's the same as the logo for my company. By this point, everybody should know that if, you, if you've seen any of Jonathan Kleck's stuff, and any of the... I'm always flying upside down. There's one over there too, Clay. Okay, so... Uh... Yeah, he's always flying upside down. I mean, it just, the guy's a Satanist. It's insane. And, and you know, people say, oh, but he came out with this really interesting thing about the Super Bowl and whatever, you know, and tying it in with, with uh, all this New Age stuff. People, be very, very careful about getting into the occult type of stuff. I mean, I have, I have, you know, I'm very, very, very cautious about that. People don't think that, you know, when we bring out something exposing witchcraft or whatever else, that we're just like sitting around studying the occult all the time. We don't. We're very careful about dabbling in that stuff. You know, but you get these guys like the, you know, Mike Hoggard and some of these other guys, and they just, they know all the in-depth in stuff of the occult. They know every little fine detail, and, and it's just studying the occult all the time. It's very, very dangerous. So... I'm not even going to waste time with the rest of this type, this this nonsense. I mean, I go through the whole thing, and it's just like, why? Uh, Jonathan Clegg is a false prophet. There's no question about that. Uh, I don't care if he gets anything right. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, some guy doing this kind of stuff, lying this way about the Lord, and it's not saved. It's as simple as that. But we're actually going to go to the uh, Internet now, and I'm going to show you uh, a list of people that I'm... I'm going to warn you about some people that are definitely false prophets. So, uh, let's check this out. Alright, we are going to spend some time now exposing some false prophets. Now, I exposed this guy a number of years ago. Um, I'll show you here real quickly. My channel here, Papist Hireling Paul Begley, he did this, he actually did the mass in one of his videos and then he deleted it. The guy's got crucifixes all over his home and everything else. Here's the false prophecies of Paul Begley, again, uh, prophesying things that never came to pass. That's the mark, the biblical mark of a false prophet. Uh, you have to watch out for that. Paul Begley and his satanic crucifix. He did this thing where the, the devil came and knocked his crucifix down and all this stuff. It's ridiculous. Paul Begley is not a King James Bible believer. The other one I did uses new versions, uh, promotes the new versions. But uh, this guy, what he does, typical of a false prophet, they will ride the news. Okay, what I mean by that is all the latest news stories, they just come out. And, you know, some of that's okay as a Christian, but just spending all your time just, you know, video after video after video after video, you know, multiple videos every single day, you know, just all the time. This is what you call an Athenian. Acts chapter 17, verse 21 for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. You see it there? And what does Paul say? 17 verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. 
Okay, Paul did not commend them for keeping up with all the latest and what's what's the latest and what's the latest. You know, I mean, this is all just a bunch of junk, is what it is. And of course, he's monetized, I'm sure. So, uh, you know, he's getting rich off of this. All the suckers clicking on the videos are getting him, making him a lot of money. But while we're on this page here, I want to kick this man as well. This is Stephen Ben Danoon, Israeli News Live. And I thought for a while that he was a decent guy and whatever else claims to be Jewish or part Jewish or something, I forget, but um, defends the nation of Israel. Well, that part's good, but he's a good buddy now with uh, Big Lie. You know? And uh, he's come out and attacked the King James Bible and and uh, the King James Bible oppresses women and stuff, you know, Christianity keeps women down. And you can change the text of the King James Bible to make women preachers now. So look out for him as well as this faker right here. Uh, just wicked false prophet is this Paul Begley. Definitely stay away from this guy. If you want to see more about it, watch my videos on him and you'll see him talking and me refuting him with scripture. But now the next one is a little bit more subtle, a little bit more crafty, and uh, there's I don't have a whole lot on this guy, but honestly, yeah, just see some bad things here. This man right here, Jack McElroy. Okay, and, and I'm going to show you why I say this. You know, because people say, "Oh, come on, he's a King James Bible believer. He's defending the King James Bible and stuff." Well, okay, here he is with David Daniels, and I think very highly of David Daniels and Chick Publications. But what's he doing with Tex Mars? This total reprobate that is uh, that hates the Jewish people, hates the, hates the nation of Israel, teaches replacement theology, was in Stephen Anderson's satanic film, Marching to Zion. But worse than that, how about uh, Jack McElroy interviews Eric Trump? And you can watch this interview on McElroy's channel. Um... How did he get, first of all, I'd like to ask the question, how did he get an interview with Eric Trump? Secondly, if you watch the video, they don't talk about salvation for one second. It's talking about Trump's philanthropy. Very common thing with uh, elite Satanists. They will do nice things so that they can hide their money and they can write off uh, their philanthropy type of thing. And with you know, They write it off in their taxes to, to make more money and things cover up their real true purposes and their wealth and things. What's going on here? I mean, can Bible believers just walk up to a guy like Eric Trump and say, hey, could I, you know, have a couple minutes of your time and sit down and I'll interview you on camera? Uh, kind of a strange thing. But let me show you another little interesting tidbit about um, Eric Trump. Here's the Wikipedia, and you can find this in other sources, but I'll just show you this one quick. Look at his alma mater. Georgetown University and it says here that he graduated with honors from Georgetown University in Washington DC Georgetown is the most powerful Jesuit school in North America and his daddy Donald Trump uh, went to Fordham another Jesuit school I guess it runs in the family you know net worth 151 million and you mean to tell me this guy's just gonna say oh yeah sure I'll sit down and talk to a Bible believing Christian kind of weird. But I found this interesting too. Here you have Paul Wittenberger. This wicked little guy acts like a sodomite, but uh, was in the, he's a Hollywood movie worker. Works on the film crews and sound crew and all this other stuff. Produces Steven Anderson's little propaganda films. But look who he, he uh, rec his mecha recommended channels, excuse me, channels right here. Framing the World Channels. You go down a couple. Oh, Jack McElroy. The guy reminds me of Russell Anderson of the uh, Hiles Anderson College, and of course you have Kent Helvind up there. Hmm. Kind of a uh, weird thing there, isn't it? <clears throat> what about the next false prophet? How about this loser right here, Edward Fenninger? Satan loves the Roman road to damnation. So where would he get a thing like that? The Roman road, Roman's road leads to that leads to hell. This is Martin Richling. Back when he was a lot heavier, he's lost weight since then. I guess more of a, needed some more Jesuit retreats or something between then and and uh, now. 
uh, lose more of that weight. But uh, Martin Richling, I mean, you watch that guy for five minutes, you'd be shutting him off. I mean, if you'd make it five minutes, you'd be, you know, really something. I mean, the guy's just a wicked, just f so filled with hate, it's ridiculous. I exposed him again, you know, too. What, watch some of my stuff on Martin Richling. He's a habitual fornicator. Um, talked about, you know, aspiring to be a Jesuit. You know, and Eric John Phelps, who I interviewed, uh, said that he believes that Martin Richling is a Jesuit because he actually worked with Martin Richling. So, but I want to show you something rather interesting here. This video right here, it's three minutes and nine seconds. We're going to go through this real quickly. But let's watch this. The Lord's Supper shows what two things we must uh, believe in to be saved. See, he's come out and he's attacked me. He calls me a Lordship Salvationist because I say faith and then, you know, uh, works meet for repentance after salvation. And he says, he's, you're adding to salvation? Where well, he's saying right here, two things you have to believe in to be saved. Not just one, two things. Let's watch this. Good morning. There are some who oh, might say that uh, some of us are being too picky in uh, looking at the plan of salvation and emphasizing the two components of salvation, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his blood atonement, that he, that his sin, that his blood paid for, for our sins on the cross, and uh, what you have to do, we have to go to the Lord's Supper. When we, uh, when we uh, remember the, the Lord in the Lord's Supper, it has two parts. It has the bread, which is unleavened bread, showing the perfection of who Jesus Christ was, uh, and the uh, the lamb without spot. And when we remember, we're remembering him. And eating and drinking are uh, metaphors for faith. So when we eat the bread, it's a faith. We're having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It shows that. It shows that in the Lord's Supper. When you eat that bread, you're, you're showing your faith in, what, in who Christ is. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. Um, if you know anything about Catholicism, they call their system the faith. Hmm. And what is their system of salvation? It's the Eucharist. The bread and the wine. And uh, we'll see here in a minute that old Fakinger here uh, actually says that he got saved by when he heard the gospel in the Catholic Church as a very, very young boy. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Let's continue. Okay, and then you move on to so 1 Corinthians 11, uh, uh, verse 23. For I receive of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. So we eat the bread in remembrance of, uh, of who Jesus Christ is. That's his person. That's the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, uh, the pure Lamb of God who gave himself on our, in our place and uh, his perfection. Then we go to the second part. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. There we drink it. Again, faith. That shows faith, what? In the blood. Okay, let me just stop here for a minute. Just shut this stupid heretic up here. Um, what he's saying is extremely dangerous. Because he's saying that the Lord's Supper is about salvation. The Lord's Supper has nothing to do with your salvation. All right? That's Catholic teaching. This is the core of Catholicism, the Mass transubstantiation where the priest turns the bread and the wine into the literal flesh and blood of Jesus Christ this is literally at the heart of Roman Catholicism he's swinging people right back to Roman Catholicism is what this, this lying papist is coming out with here all right it's very very important to understand this what is communion for in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 or excuse me chapter 10 1 Corinthians chapter 10 it's talking about let me just show you this real quickly here. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it is chapter 11. Because I always think chapter 11, I think about the uh, thing of the head covering in the first part of it there. Okay, right here you have it, verses 23 down through. And it's talking about uh, this due in remembrance of me. That's not faith. This is supposed to be a, a perpetual thing that you do over and over and over again. 
Faith is something that you, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross is once and done. And that's it. So you can't say, well, the, the elements are there and things like this. You know, no, no. <clears throat> I mean, look at verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. What's the whole deal there? Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Communion is about self-examination. You are to examine yourself. Uh, where's the... right there. Let a man... Verse 28, let a man examine himself, and you judge yourself. That's what communion is about. It has nothing to do with your salvation. Not one thing. Unless you are a Roman Catholic. Like this man right here. Let's continue to listen to this heretic. It shows what, that's what he did on the cross for us by dying for our sins. So there are two components to, to uh, salvation, and both components have to be there to be saved. You have what? Two components to salvation, and both components have to be there to be saved? Really? Let's continue. You have to believe in, in the blood, the blood atonement, uh, what Christ did for us on the cross, and then you have to believe in Him uh, as our Savior. So both are there, and we're not being picky by saying both components are there, because that's part of the Lord's Supper. That's why both parts are there, bread and the, and the, and the, and the blood, the wine represent those things, and eating and drinking represent faith. Whoa, oh, 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 did you hear that? Let's back it up just a little bit. Eating and drinking represent faith. Did you get that? This guy's a papist. Listen. The blood, the wine, represent those things, and eating and drinking represent faith. Eating and drinking represent faith. There, you heard it again. You see what this man has done? This man came into the King James Bible believing movement years and years and years ago. He's been around since I've been on YouTube. And this faker came in and he's been posing as a King James Bible believer. He's got Ruckman's commentaries up here. And you listen to this guy, you will come away confused. It just is like, I don't even know what he said in that video. God's not the author of confusion. And this guy is purposefully confusing people. He's a very, very wicked devil, this man right here. But let's continue and just play the rest of it. So you're having faith in two aspects of the, uh, of the, of the cross. One, Jesus Christ, that he was uh, uh, the uh, perfect man, God-man, who went to the cross in our place. And two, what he did on the cross, that he paid for our sins on the cross through his own blood, uh, his shed blood. Those are, that's two components, and you can't take one without the other and say someone is saved. They have to have, have both. Have okay, they have to have both. Then he calls me a heretic because I say repentance to salvation. There's repentance of sins there. And he's making salvation more than just belief. Well, he just made it more than just belief. have to be there. And uh, that's what the Lord's Supper represents. The two components of salvation... The person of Christ, who he is, uh, and his, uh, of his perfection, and uh, you're believing in him, and the blood atonement, that you're believing in what he did for you on the cross. Amen. Thank you. What a heretic. And yet he comes out and he says the Romans road leads you to hell, taking people through, showing them that they're sinners, and they need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. He says that that will lead you to hell. And yet he comes out and has the nerve to say that communion is salvation. That the elements are there. You have to have faith in Jesus and faith in the blood. I thought he just said believe. You don't even need to pray a prayer according to some of the heretics videos. You just believe. There doesn't even, you don't even need to call upon the name of the Lord. You just simply believe. And now he comes out. And this is uh, July 25th, 2016. So this is not that old. Today is uh, August the 12th. So less than a month old. This video with this devil-possessed heretic here. And check this out. Here's the video I have. Ed Fenninger's Catholic Salvation Admission. Alright, listen to this. This is, I skipped ahead. He's 
you know, being interviewed by James from Ex Catholics for Christ, and I don't think James called this because uh, he didn't really say a whole lot about it. But listen to this. Start with an interview. I'd like to get a bit of background as to how you became a Christian. How did it That's James Patel from Ex Catholics for Christ uh, speaking there. He just said, you know, how did you become a Christian? We'll begin for you, Ed. Okay. I'll pay very close attention to what Ed Fenninger says here. Mr. Anybody who teaches repentance or changed life is teaching Lordship salvation. Listen to his salvation testimony. Well, actually, I was raised in Mormon Catholic Church and got saved very young uh, when I heard the basic principles of the gospel from the Mormon Catholic Church. Uh, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died for my sins on the cross. And uh, fortunately, I'd gotten out before they started mixing up with a lot of work. Uh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. So there you see it. You can watch the rest of the video. I talk a little bit more about the thing. But the whole point is, he got saved, quote-unquote, very young when he heard the truth of the gospel in the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church pounds it into your head, the whole Eucharist system. And that's what he's now saying right here. What two things we must believe in to be saved. He's a Catholic. He is nothing more than a lost Catholic who is busy infiltrating the King James Bible-believing movement. If you are subscribed to this fake liar here, you better unsubscribe as quickly as you can before God's judgment falls upon you as well. All right, Very, very dangerous. Now we have uh, this Anita Fuentes here, this another lying faker, and she says here in this video, and this is her channel, this isn't somebody putting this together. This is hers. She says, I received the baptism approximately four months after being born again. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I pray daily in the Spirit. Speaking in tongues include praying and singing. Chapter and verse on that, please. Show me where anybody was speaking in tongues and praying and singing in tongues. You hear me, de you hear me demonstrating the gift as you read this with worship music. Now, I'm going to play a little bit of this, but honestly, I can't handle a whole lot of this. And quite frankly, she's probably it's probably the devils that are within this witch uh, that are speaking. So I'm just going to play a little tiny bit of it. It's quite vexing. So here we go. So I wanted to I want I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pray in the spirit and. Um, Anyway, please feel free to join me. Shut up a car and Yeah. Anyhow. Shut up a car. You know. Yeah. I mean, she sounds like she said shot up a car or something there. I don't know. But, you know, what a devil-possessed lunatic. I mean, it's just disgusting. And she goes into the thing of saying that... Uh, see, where is she? Is she done with the whole thing here? Okay. Do not let anyone, anyone stop you from receiving this gift. Do not let anyone stop you from, from, from uh, taking this gift and, and using it and exercising it. It pleases the Lord so much. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's called blaspheming the Holy Ghost. By faking speaking in tongues, you are blaspheming the Holy Ghost, is what you're doing. I have a whole study on tongues. You can watch that. But occultists regularly speak in tongues. Okay, tongues in the Bible are always languages. And when you have unknown tongues in 1 Corinthians 14, that's why there are interpreters. It's just simply saying tongues that people are, you know, languages that people in the congregation are not familiar with. And that's why you need an interpreter. This stuff here is devil possession, is what this is. You get saved and later on the Holy Spirit comes upon you. No, it's called a devil spirit comes upon you. Let's continue a little bit more with this devil it pleases him you're allowing the holy spirit to edify your spirit you're allowing the holy spirit to build you up in although the, you allow the holy spirit to edify your spirit uh no you do that through the word okay through studying his word the spirit of truth comes and guides you into all truth not into blah, 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 you know talking <laughs> stupid nonsense let's continue in your most holy faith you're allowing the holy spirit to to manifest himself within your born-again spirit and, and to... And to so, 
the Holy Spirit manifesting himself within your born-again spirit. <laughs> wow, two different spirits. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, continue. Roll your born-again spirit and into pronounce and, and to speak forth your future, to prepare literally your heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit for what God has ordained for you to receive. Because without our born-again spirit being edified, without our born-again spirit even being, um, 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 you know, built up. See, you know, see, watch how these people, they, they, they struggle and they go, um, uh, uh, you can tell that they're like trying to think of something from the Bible to say and there's nothing there. And by the way, I do realize that, you know, let me just say this before I continue. I do realize that we have a spirit and, you know, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, I understand that. But she's saying born again spirit. Um, chapter and verse on that one. Please give me that that uh, exact title from the King James Bible. Not in there. But let's, I don't know how much more I'm going to subject you to here, but we'll watch a little bit more. We may not be able to receive all that he has called us to receive. We may not be able to enter in into what he's called us to enter in. A lot of us don't know how to enter into his rest. A lot of us don't know how to sit. Uh, entering into his rest means you're dead. Uh, not you get some witchcraft devil spirit coming into where you can blibber blabber and blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That's not entering into his rest. Continue sit still and just rest and just or, or, or a lot of us don't know how to receive the blessings that he has for us or to receive the favor and grace he has for us folks it's only by the power of the holy spirit that we're able to enter his, into his rest and to receive all that he has for us to receive it's only by his holy spirit and, and 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 through this precious gift of speaking in tongues we're speaking forth his his glory his we're speaking forth his 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 um we're, we're magnified <laughs> Okay, that's about enough of that nonsense. She just, just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make up things, and, and I'm just gonna keep rambling on and on and on, and we, we, we just can't enter into his marvelous gift, and, 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 and if we just would just do amazing things, we could just enter into amazing things, and, and we could just, it, yes, shut up. All right, you're not called to preach. You're not anything at all like that. And here, here's her actual website, and uh, this is. You know, here, pastors, Ignatius, Le oh, I'm sorry, Ignacio, a little inside joke there, and Anita Fuentes, you know, she's a pastor along, she co-pastors, I mean, show me that in scripture, not to be found, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing of female pastors is completely unscriptural, but let's watch another one of her, uh, this is December 21st of 2014, let's watch what this lying faker has to say we have to understand that there is going to be a last generation that is going to go through this persecution we have to understand this I, I, I have been um, uh, and it's not just me I'm sure many of you we have you know there's been a, uh, a teaching there's been uh, a teaching that has been since in the 1800s and even before the 1800s regarding a pre-tribulation rapture pre-tribulation rapture speaking on the rapture the coming away actually it's called catching away but you lack any brains so you wouldn't have known that of the body of Christ before the great tribulation completely unscriptural, the term Great Tribulation. It's not a title, it's a description. Uh, the time is called the time of Jacob's trouble and uh, Daniel's 70th week. Both references to the Jewish people who the time is for, not for the body of Christ. It's not biblical. It's not biblical, not one iota. Now, I, I it's, it's just, it's just. Okay. <laughs> uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And then she gives a bunch of scripture references down here. Um, when you actually look up the passage there, here, we'll, we'll do it. We'll go here to. John answered. 
here Luke 3.16, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay, keep reading. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff will he burn, or the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Do you see the difference? The wheat go into the garner. The chaff go into unquenchable fire. The baptism is Holy Ghost saved and fire lost people burning in hell for all of eternity. So when she's saying here that you're going to get baptized in fire, Holy Ghost and fire, that's a contradiction. You can't have both. This is saved, this is lost. But she's saying that you're going to have fire. It's interesting. She has fire in the background there. Hmm. Very interesting. And we're not going to go through this whole stupid nonsense. But she denies the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Typical. You see, because people like this can't control you, she has to use fear as a tactic of control. Why? Because she's a fake. She's a fraud. She's a witch that needs to keep her stinking mouth shut. You know, whatever. Okay, here's the next wing nut. Um, this guy here, Wayne Levi Price, Tribulation Saints. Again, you know, another guy. Oh, you're going to go through this time period. But listen to what he says. This guy's another papist. Prophets and prophetesses. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, however you want to pronounce it, you better be alert, you better be ready, you better be, know the Bible, you better know what's up. You people are getting deceived left and right. Only the elect who love the Word of God will not be deceived. Uh, okay, for Christians? I thought we were born again and, and uh, part of his body. The question is, are you one of the elect? Are you living like a son of God? Are you living obedient? Are you striving to obey Jesus with every nerve in your body? Or are you comfortable with a little bit of sin thinking you're getting into heaven? Uh-oh. You're comfortable with a little bit of sin thinking you're getting into heaven? He would imply works to be saved, would you? There, Levi, Wayne Levi Price. You faker. I had a guy tell me in an email, no, I'm not mentioning any names. He says he's, he's in bondage to sexual sin. But he says, I think I'm going to heaven. If you are comfortable and confident in your salvation and you're comfortable with sin, you're out of your mind. There, that doesn't match. That's like water and oil. It doesn't mix. Sin and confidence together, confidence in Christ, going to heaven, confidence in your salvation, and perpetual practicing of sin, they don't mix. If you're comfortable you're going to heaven, and you got pr practicing sin and addictions and obsessions in your life, you are deceived. Really? Look, salvation to those who obey. Obey Jesus. Well, they're lying false prophet. 1 John chapter 1, uh, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Hmm. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So what this devil is trying to proclaim is that he is the one who is saving himself. It's obedience. He's obeying. See, this is lordship salvation. All right, this is, well, it's a you know form of lordship salvation because lordship salvation says you got to do this stuff and then you get salvation later on. This is just Catholicism. Having a die in a state of grace, you have to obey the church which the church is Jesus according to Catholicism. 
this guy's just a closet Catholic. And up here I actually to find the guy's channel, I remember seeing a thing where he actually had a video about a man cutting off his area there to live holy for God. You know, I'll delete that because it's vexing, but that's how I found the guy's channel. But that's another teaching of this wing nut. He's a false prophet. And it's funny because he's talking about false prophets. You need to wake up. Come under the blood of Jesus by obeying his teachings. Yes, okay, devil worshiper. Come under the blood of Jesus. Well, let's see what the blood of Jesus does for you. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood, look at this, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from how much sin? All sin. All sin. Our righteousness is imputed to us. Something that this Catholic doesn't know anything about. And you'll be saved. That's how you're saved, by grace through faith. Peace. Why not uh, finish the verse there, liar? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. By grace through faith. Not of yourselves, not of works. Hmm. Somehow I must have missed that one. Alright. Tribulation saints. <laughs> I don't think so. But uh, finally, we're going to go to another one here. This little liar here. Uh, vigilant Christian. Okay. This child is all about money. Click here to donate. 395,365 subscribers. Now tell me how a Christian could get that many people watching him. And of course, you know, you go down through here and what's his videos all about? Illuminati, 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 Illuminati. All this stuff about Satanism and everything else. That's how he gets his views. It's a sensationalism. But here's why the guy's dangerous. I'm going to show you this video here. Uh, he quotes new versions through it. Um, he does not believe that hell is eternal. It's a, just annihilation. And he makes fun of it, calling it a, a torture chamber, and he compares it to wicked things and stuff. This guy is lost. Uh, you aren't going to believe this way as a Christian. I'm going to tell you that right now. You have to just refuse to accept what the Bible teaches. I'll show you that here in this video. Hey everyone, it's the Vigilant Christian Mario, and you're here for another edition of Vigilant Biblical Studies. In today's video, I'm going to be starting in my controversial video series looking at what is the punishment for sin? Is there going to be an eternal torment chamber? Let's see? Is there going to be an eternal torment chamber? See, he puts in his own terminology. He sets up the straw man and then he goes from there. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about a torture chamber. Well, no, you, you just made that term up. See, this is deception. This is not the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, I'm just not, I don't really know. I'm, I'm just kind of a new Christian. and I'm not a theologian. It's, well, then shut your mouth. All right? You have no right being out here making the vigilant Christian biblical studies. And you're a novice? And you don't really know things and things? Then shut your mouth. You're, you're coming out here deceiving people. Let's continue a little bit here. Uh, coming with the kingdom of God. Somewhere where, maybe underground, underneath the his throne or somewhere, I don't know. Uh, there are going to be people who will be in flames, given, given eternal life. So they're going to be eternally living, but in a tortured state, in a fire pit. Under fire pit? See the little sarcasm again? Underneath God's kingdom, or a side, or I don't know, where is it, right? Uh, so I, want I mean, this, these are the words of a lost man. Where's hell? Where's you know? You, you'll see this. You, you witness to lost people. They'll say, "Okay, prove to me that hell exists." Where is it? That's what this kid is saying. I wanted to investigate this, and just to let you know, this is going to be a controversial topic. It already has uh, people go as far as saying I'm fake. I'm you are I'm false. I'm a fraud. You are for even questioning this. I'm studying this out. 
I'm not a theologian or standing here saying I have all the Bible figured out, but I'm... Well then shut up. You don't have the whole Bible figured out, then what in the world are you doing coming out calling it a biblical study? Shut your stupid mouth until you understand the Bible. You know, I mean the Bible says, First Timothy chapter 3... All right, talking about the office of a bishop. Verse 6 says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation and, uh, or into, into the condemnation of the devil. Uh, he shouldn't even be on the thing saying anything. And especially denying something that's so clear from Scripture. But uh, let's we'll continue a little bit more. I'm looking at this theology of an eternal torment chamber in the kingdom of God and the theology of an eternal torment chamber. It's not what the Bible says. He's making his own term. You see how the liars do this? I have some questions and uh, would like you guys to join me in that study because as I look at it, the more I look at it, uh, it looks like people are buying into a false idea of hell that seems more like Hades from Greek mythology and myths uh, than actually what the Bible teaches about the judgment of God, the lake of fire, and uh, what will happen to the wicked on the day of judgment. Uh, looks more like a South Park fairy tale, in my opinion. Uh, uh, it's a South, looks more like a South Park fairy tale. Uh, the Holy Spirit's not leading this kid to say that. All right. A version of hell than a biblical one. All right, so what we're going to do today very quickly is I'm going to leave this linked up. Hell, eternal torment, or complete annihilation. All right, so this is the question. I do believe in hell, so some people are going as far as saying that I don't believe there's uh, going to be a lake. Okay, well, we go into this thing here, and he just goes down through, and he's quoting all these different versions and stuff like this. And uh, I want to skip ahead till he comes up with this thing here. Um, let's look at this here. It's Chapter 14, verse 11. Okay, uh, and the smoke of their torment ascended it, ascended it up forever and ever. I can't can't even pronounce the King James here. It says ascendeth, ascended, ascended it. Did. Oh, there's something wrong with his uh, the spirit that's in him. But look at what he says here. I mean, look at look at the text of the King James Bible. Let me maximize this so you can see it better. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. They have no rest day nor night. And the smoke of their torment? How could it be any clearer? But look what he says. What ascends up forever and ever? The smoke of their torment. Imagine them being tormented in flames and their smoke going up. And it is the smoke that ascends in this expression forever and ever. They lived on happily ever after, forever and ever. It's a way to express a long period of time. It doesn't mean eternal. Okay. <laughs> forever and ever. It doesn't mean eternal. <laughs> oh, this kid's an idiot. Let's continue. Okay, and it's not even in reference to them being tormented for eternity. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not even reference to, the, to them being tormented for eternity. Okay there, princess. Uh, then why is the smoke coming up from that torment forever and ever? And why is it that they have no rest, day nor night? He won't discuss this line here. So again, there's so much t scripture twisting that has to occur, in my opinion. See, see, uh, scripture twisting, and it, it's just reading it as it stands. See, the Holy Spirit is not going to lead somebody to to just deny plain English like this. That's why this kid is lost. That and many other reasons. I can't do it. I haven't been able to uh, be honest with myself and say that that's what I see in the scriptures. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. Not that they're tor... See, they have to twist it up. They are... He just twisted it. The, 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 their smoke goes up forever and ever. Okay, let's just assume for a minute here that they are annihilated. Okay. Um, if all the inhabitants of hell or the lake of fire, you know, uh, if you know, the lake of fire comes after hell, Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne judgment, but uh, actually Revelation 19, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Let me show you this real quick just to give you a good one here. 
um, the little Super Mario here won't talk about Revelation chapter 19 the first mention of the lake of fire All right, Revelation 19 verse 20 and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him uh, with which he had with, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone okay they were cast alive into the lake of fire all right first mention of the lake of fire there in the King James Bible all right after this the Lord uh, takes them here and um, let's see where's the verse okay verse 10 and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever there's no smoke here first of all I'd like to point out they are tormented day and night forever and ever but the beast and the false prophet are there after the thousand years are finished now if it's just annihilation how in the world you know there are they it takes a thousand years for the Lord to burn them up in that fire uh, I don't think so and this little kid here, I just don't see it. I just can't be honest. If I'm honest with myself, I just don't see it. I don't see it. You know, because if I saw it, I'd have to preach it, and then and I'd lose some of my subscribers, and I wouldn't get all this money, so I could look like a little sodomite. Yeah. Let's continue. Tormented forever and ever. Not instead of the smoke of their torment ascends up in forever and ever. Okay, so, um, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> It just, uh, yeah, it's like a bad, a bad uh, blonde joke or something. You know, like totally, yeah. I mean, like so, yeah. Uh, you know, this kid's called to preach. I don't think so. You know, oh, he's gonna make videos and things and biblical studies. Yeah, okay. And you know, again, like I was saying, if let's get the text up here, Revelation. Oh, we are actually in Revelation. What am I thinking? Revelation 14, verse 11. All right. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. All right. Let's look at that phrase. All right. If they're annihilated in the first hour or so, or they burn up pretty quickly. Where's the smoke coming from? Hmm? I mean, does it take that long for smoke to dissipate? It just goes on forever and ever? Isn't that weird? Or maybe the Lord just kind of is slowly judges all the people that have died so that there's constantly a nice group of them going down and getting burned up and annihilated so the smoke of their torment continues up forever and ever and ever. Uh, yeah. Stupid nonsense from this little kid. But uh, I'm not going to play anymore. It's just it's absurd. But you see here, these are just a collection, a small collection of the kind of false prophets that are out there. They deny fundamentals of the faith they are frauds they're doing this thing for the money I mean 395,000 subscribers you don't get there by being a Christian All right? Christians aren't watching this junk this is this is just again the Athenians you know it's all this thing is there you have this faker right there work salvationist this fake woman here denies the uh, catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble and she speaks in tongues like a devil possessed charismaniac this guy here total complete uh, Catholic uh, got saved very young when I heard the truth in the Catholic Church and the Lord's Supper has the two parts of salvation again Martin Richling Jesuit there's no question about that the guy's just a total wicked false prophet fake here you know I have questions about this guy Jack McElroy you know maybe I'm wrong but uh, why on earth is he hanging out with a Jesuit Georgetown University Jesuit and why is he hanging out with him that's another important question you know I don't know brethren I don't know and Paul Begley there's no question about that guy. Definitely a false prophet. So that is going to be it for this 
portion of the video. Thank you for watching. All right, I'm going to close here with the, I think the best thing I can say uh, with this whole subject of false prophets. There'll be more coming out. You know, people that I will be exposing in the future. It's unfortunately it's going to have to be part of what I do. Uh, we're going to read about that here. Uh, Acts chapter 20, um, verse 28. This is my job. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's why I do this ministry. I'm trying to feed you the word of God. Verse 29, For I know this, that, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. We saw some of those today. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Professing Bible-believing Christians, people that use the right Bible, people that might even say the right gospel. And yet they are false prophets. Verse 31, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Well, for me it's been the space of eight years. I mean, if you go back before the time I was online, it's definitely eight years. Um, I've been warning people. That's what I do. You say, what are we left with, brother? Verse 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God, and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up, and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You have to judge everything by this book, this King James Bible. This is your standard. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace. Right there. If you think that you can get by with just I'll kind of discern things and whatever else. Uh, you're not going to make it. You need to be able to have a book to rely on. All right. That's going to be it for this study. Like I said, there's going to be more coming out as time goes by. Um, uh, one thing I've learned about false prophets, too, is that uh, they produce rotten fruit, like we talked about in the first study. And uh, as time goes by, that fruit becomes more rotten smelling. Okay? And uh, so a lot of these people that are false right now are just going to get worse and worse and worse. So uh, that's going to be it for this study. Thank you for watching. Please keep us in your prayers.